Hello and welcome to a special update of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force coming to you from the studios of the Government Information Service. My name is Jesse Leonce and in studio uh, we have uh, the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Milton Daisy, the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Dr. Mashama Seeley, and uh, accompanied by uh, the Public Relations Officer within the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Anne Joseph. A special good day to you all. Thank you so much for being here. Good day. Uh, we have a few updates, and uh, this includes uh, the COVID protocols uh, updates, as we have grown accustomed to, as well as uh, criminal offenses and campaign protocols, above all, uh, being finally agreed upon by the three registered political parties here in St. Lucia. Of course, preceding uh, the election day that is constitutionally due this year. We do have uh, agreements made by these organizations, the government of St. Lucia, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force with these parties and uh, the commissioner of police will engage you shortly on that. But we start with the COVID-19 protocols and uh, the offenses, the updates that we have from the force in terms of enforcement of this legislation. And we start with Dr. Seeley on that. Dr. Seeley. Thank you, good afternoon. The following COVID-19 breaches were recorded by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force from 27 December 2020 to 29 June 2021. Business operation breaches, 196. Number of persons arrested, 32. Number of persons convicted, one. Complaints lodged, eight. Number of individuals warned, 158. Home quarantine breaches, 26. And these individuals were escorted to the quarantine site. Quarantine or state quarantine breaches, five. These individuals were escorted back to their rooms in the quarantine facility. Home parties, 14. Number of persons arrested, Five complaints lodged, two warnings given, seven. Total minibus travel breaches, 163. Warnings, 163. Individual protocol breaches, and that would be non adherence to wearing a face mask, 996. Arrested, 141. Convicted, 45. Complaints lodged, 4. Warnings given, 851. Mass crowd breaches, 40. Number of persons arrested, 4. Complaints lodged, 8. Warnings given, 28. Hotel breaches, 15. Number of persons arrested, 1. Convictions, one number of individuals warned 14 curfew breaches 307 number of persons arrested 111 convictions 9 warnings 177 complaints lodged 10 total number of persons arrested 294 Total number of complaints lodged, 32. Convictions thus far, 56. Cases pending in the court, 125. Warnings overall, 1,437. Everyone is therefore encouraged to continue to follow the protocols and persons who are not following the protocols are asked to do so for the safety of themselves and their families. And these protocols include wearing a mask that covers your nose, mouth, and chin area, sanitizing, maintaining a social distance, avoiding crowded bars and other areas, maintaining the curfew. These protocols were put in place to assist us and to keep us safe. And so everyone, once again, is encouraged to follow these protocols. For the past few weekends, we observed that motorcades and other activities 
which have not been approved have been taking place. We are asking that people refrain from doing so as there's a process in order to request permission to have these activities. After having a discussion yesterday, campaign protocols are now in place. And so they're finalized and approved. And the commissioner will expound on these protocols. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Seeley, Assistant Commissioner of Police. We now go move on to Corporal Ann Joseph, who will give us an update on recent criminal offenses well, for the period of this past month. Corporal Joseph. Okay. During the last month, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force recorded several successes in relation to firearm recoveries, as well as updates in relation to some homicides committed on island recently and um, in the last few months. One such matter is that officers attached to the bicycle patrol unit stopped a motor vehicle in relation to traffic violations on Bridge Street cast trees. And during that time, a passenger attempted to make a way and was chased by the officers. He was arrested and was found in possession of a 9mm Taurus pistol with 13 rounds of ammunition in a magazine as well as, well as one chambered round. Codel Alexander, who is a 17-year-old resident of Marigo, was subsequently charged for possession of firearm and ammunition. On the 22nd of June 2021, Officers attached to the Grosley Police Station arrested and charged 26-year-old Travis Snack of Millennium Highway after he was found in possession of a .22 double-barrel pistol and three rounds of .22 ammunition. He was granted bail in the sum of $12,000 cash or suitable surety. 42-year-old Blaine Girard, who is of Jackmel but residing in Cap Estate, was arrested and charged after officers attached to the Grizzly Police Station conducted a search of his place of residence at Cap Estate, as well as a motor vehicle he was in possession of. And following these searches, the officers charged him with one count of possession of firearm, two counts of possession of ammunition, three counts of possession of controlled drugs, and three counts of intent to supply. And that is because a quantity of what is suspected to be um, cocaine, a nine millimeter pistol, seven rounds of nine millimeter ammunition, 28 rounds of .22 ammunition were all recovered by the officers in his possession. Karim Alexander of Henry Avenue Viewfort was also arrested and charged after he was found in possession of a Taurus nine millimeter pistol and seven rounds of ammunition on Friday the 18th of June 2021 by officers attached to the Viewfort Police Station. Randall Evans of Clark Lane Viewfort was also arrested and charged after he was found in possession of a 9mm Taurus pistol, 10 rounds of ammunition, as well as a laser and light attachment for the firearm. And that was on Thursday, June 17th, 2021, and the charges were preferred by officers attached to the Viewfort Police Station. Both Randall Evans and Karim Alexander are still in custody awaiting a subsequent court hearing. On the 21st of May 2021, Nikron O'Neill Baptist, who is 16 years old, and Hayes Lamil, a 16-year-old of Denry, were arrested and charged for the murder of Daniel Laura, alias Stiki, and that incident occurred on the 30th of March 2021 at White Rock Denry. They are both remanded in custody and are due to reappear before the court on the 23rd of July 2021. The Major Crime Unit of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force also arrested and charged Miguel Lucien, alias Concrete, on the 18th of June 2021 for causing the death of Taisha Raphael and Jason Polius as well as the attempted murder of two other males. And this was in relation to the incident which occurred on the 23rd of May, 2021, about 9.05 p.m. at Boiden Jack Mel. Miguel Lucien remains in custody pending a sufficiency hearing. The major crime unit also arrested and charged MacGyver Zhe during a police operation and he was arrested in connection with the murder of Tony Edmund, which occurred on the 17th of May, 2021 at Cul-de-Sac. He was 
charged on the 25th of June 2021 and he was remanded into custody. His next hearing is scheduled for the 20th of July 2020. In relation to the campaign protocols that Dr. Seeley referenced earlier and the commissioner will expand on, an agreement between the stakeholders was arrived at and it is as follows. The campaign activity quota, the guiding principle, all campaign activities and events must comply with COVID-19 prevention and control protocols as directed by the Ministry of Health. One small constituency office meetings, planning meetings, not advised, not public, and there's no limit on the number of meetings. Two, in-person public constituency meetings. There is no limit on the number of meetings. All meetings will require the prior approval of the police. Three, national public political meetings or rallies. No national public meeting or rally will be permitted during the campaign to reduce the risk of infection associated with major mass crowd gatherings. Four, island-wide national motorcades. Island-wide national motorcades will only be permitted on a Saturday, Sunday, or a public holiday. Each party will be permitted one island-wide motorcade per week. Permission will be granted for constituency whistle stops. Five, constituency motorcades, only within the constituency. One each per party or independent independent candidate per constituency per week. And the north of the island means from Groselay to Denry South and Groselay to Ancillary. And the south of the island is from Mikud North to Soufre Fonse Jacques. There is also curfew compliance attached there, and it says all authorized activities must end at least one hour before the curfew time. There is an application process that all parties must undergo, and that is parties must apply to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force at least three days in advance of the day of the proposed event or activity, motorcades and public meetings included, providing all details of the activities. And parties or organizers must gain written authorization or approval from the police before proceeding with any activity. Okay, thank you very much for that update on the general criminal offenses for the last month or so, as well as expounding on the campaign protocols that have been agreed by the three registered political parties and the government of St. Lucia. Uh, I now turn to you, Commissioner of Police, Mr. Milton Daisy. Uh, we're seeing uh, an agreement to quite unprecedented, an unprecedented election campaign. No mass gatherings, uh, limitations in terms of meetings and so on. Speak to us about the process uh, prior to this agreement and some of the viewpoints of the registered parties and going forward, the, the feeling of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force with this agreement made by all parties? Actually, when we realized that there were political activities um, going on, um, which involved motorcades, whistle stops, um, all various activities of a political um, nature, and we realized the need to come together and set protocols for those various um, meetings. Actually, I must indicate that um, all political meetings based on the law, you must, persons must seek permission from the Office of Commissioner of Police. So there must be permission. Um, so when we um, realize that, and especially since we are in that season of elections, we believe that um, I consulted with CMO who agreed that yes, we could um, have certain meetings, but under strict protocols. Um, as a result, we met and um, devised some protocols and brought it out to the various stakeholders, um, including the, the political parties, the various political parties, also independent um, candidates that we could have 
identified. So these were circulated to them. And yesterday, the um, 28th of um, June, we had a meeting with um, the main political parties and um, also some other members of the Green Party. At that meeting, um, we discussed, and it was healthy discussion, and I must say I was very pleased with um, the result and had agreed on certain terms, especially um, the CMO stressing the need for persons to comply with COVID protocols. Um, we agreed, and the parties themselves agreed, that there would be, for every event, you would have a team to ensure that they would be reminding persons of the protocol, have the necessary hand sanitizers and uh, so on. Probably um, in the open, you need to have um, pipes running and um, running water, um, so to say, so that persons could frequently wash their hands. The wearing of masks was stressed. And um, we believe, and in fact, the the persons who were in attendance agreed that uh, they would do all in their powers to ensure that persons adhere to the various protocols. Now, one of the, um, in as much as we have opened up, so to say, the campaign, the campaigning, but one of the things you must have permission. But what we wouldn't want is for persons to have meetings or motorcades at any part and the police is not aware because that is what was happening. We need to control these um, things. We need to have police officers assigned to um, the various meetings for security purposes. So um, that is why a certain number of events were identified where um, it was also agreed that beforehand the various parties would send a list of the dates that they wish to have their, their events. And the applications could follow after for the various individual events. But um, this, we believe, would help us in our planning stages. OK. Speak to us about the implications for uh, political parties or independent candidates who go contrary to this agreement. Yes, actually, it is an offense to have any political meeting any motorcade of any sort um, without the permission of the commissioner. So once you are doing it without permission, it is an offense which involves um, arresting. Now, we, the police, we do not want to go that route. So we are urging persons, and um, that was one of the main reasons that we brought the main parties together to understand that if they are going to have their um, meetings, the motorcades, and so on, that they need permission so the police is aware and could make the, take the ne necessary steps to um, police these events. Okay. When it comes to enforcing the law, particularly during the political campaign period, mm -hmm. it can be a very delicate situation. Uh, speak to the significance of this agreement being a basis for which all of the political candidates and hopefuls can uh, be judged by, I should say, um, so that if in case we do have an infraction of the law, if the enforcement of the law is uh, brought down, brought to bear, it will be against this. At least the Royal Zenusha Police Force will be able to rely on that. Yes, and um, as it was understood yesterday, as I told them, mm -hmm. that once you, have, you are adhering to, number one, the protocols, they should have no issue. They, I don't think there's any need for a police to confront anyone. If you have permission for your activity, there should be no, no reason for the police to confront any individual. So the presence of the police there would be to ensure that you have a safe um, activity. And um, we are asking and I'm still employing persons that you should not have any activity um, without prior permission. Um, some, um, sometimes we have seen in the past that persons have activities and um, would call the police after to say I'm having this, but that will not be permitted. And of course, I believe there's sufficient activities um, that are set so that persons would get their required um, permission. 
with, so that there would be no issues with the law. Okay, campaigning during the COVID period. Speak to us about um, enforcement in that respect. Yes, um, actually, one of the reasons for an application and for permission is that the police to provide security for it. So um, that is why we're asking the individuals um, who are applying for the permission to do it three days. In fact, the law requires you to do it at least three days prior so that we could put the police in our policing plan in place to police that activity. Um, where, again, where there's no permission, we are not expecting to have any activity, and the police will do all in its powers to stop that activity. Okay, and this agreement, will it be published online? Yes, um, actually uh, every political party would have a copy of it. The intention is to publish it online, um, to make it available to all stakeholders who, who have the need to, to see it and, and so on. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, the new protocols took effect on Friday, that was the 25th of June. If you just comment on the resolve of, of, of the police force, really, with the relaxed measures, so to speak, the curfew being the primary one. Yes, actually, it, um, I must say that it, it was one that um, needs to be noted. Actually, persons, um, I don't know if they believed that the country was open and pe people were free. You saw persons coming out in large numbers without wearing the mask and so on and without observing protocols. Um, the only major thing that was changed was the time of the curfew from 9 p.m. to 11. That's what was changed, but all of the protocols remained in place, but persons were not wearing masks. They, um, you had some business places, were overcrowded and so on, but um, especially in the Grosile area, but the police, and I must commend um, the Grosile police, um, Corporal Dashiville, um, who was in charge of a patrol team who ensured that persons shut down because um, it was becoming dangerous. Yes. Okay. Um, how, how is the force contending with this new, with this emerging situation of vaccinated individuals? And, you know, uh, globally, they are privileged, I, I should say, but not legally in, in, in all respects across the board. Uh, how is the Royal Solution Police Force dealing with this issue? Has it had to contend with any particular instance of, of non-compliance because a person felt that they were fully vaccinated? Um, I believe uh, that it is uh, an issue uh, which brings about uh, various um, challenges, especially where persons are permitted to host a party with a certain number of persons who are fully vaccinated, but um, the checks and balances have to be done by, um, by them to ensure that everybody who is, in that, um, who is in that function is fully vaccinated. However, um, we have seen that um, there were, no, there were non-compliance in that, in that regard, and people are um, it is free. Persons are going to attend their functions, and um, no one is actually checking. I must rem remind um, individuals also that there is an application process in as much as you could have the um, functions, the social activities, but there is a, an application process. And one of the um, requirements is that you would have at least two security officers present, one being a police. Okay, so, so you cannot, if everyone is yes. fully vaccinated, you make the application, you still must have a degree of surveillance. So, surveillance um, at that place, because if not, uh, persons do not comply, okay. unless we become responsible enough to do it, yeah, there must be policing of it. Okay. Uh, I come to you, Dr. Seeley, uh, based on your statements with regard to breaches in the COVID-19 protocols. Can you speak to additional adjustments that have been made from the enforcement perspective based on the adjusted COVID-19 regulations, curfew and whatnot? Uh, as Commissioner indicated, the main change would have been the curfew. So the hours of patrol would have had to change um, to be a little later in terms of going out and ensuring that the bars close on time, shops close on time, supermarkets close on time, 
and that people are not roaming the streets and that the persons who are on the road have the requisite NEMO pass that grants them the authority to be out after curfew. Okay, we're still getting reports of breaches in home quarantine. Uh, what indication is this giving us in terms of our capacity to police public, the public? Okay, so I would say with regards to home quarantine, every now and again, there are a few individuals who they inform that they are COVID positive and they still they go to the supermarkets, they go to the banks, they go out and the excuse is that they do not have anybody to do so for them. Um, so they're encouraged to have a family member or a friend pay their bills, you know, purchase those groceries drop it by the door for them. And you also have a few people who still believe that there's no such thing as COVID, and so their behavior is not as it should be. Um, with regards to uh, other breaches, such as the curfew breaches that we ha have seen and we saw this past weekend because the curfew changed you will find people lying on the beaches after hours or staying out in the bars late and so it's just a matter of speaking with the bar owners reminding them that they need to adhere to the protocols and doing some of the same things that we have done in the past to ensure that the breaches are minimized as much as possible Another thing to notice is the continuation of the transport sector being let off with warnings. Um, can you speak to, um, give us any insight on that uh, in terms of them being just let off with warnings and also will we see in future a tightening in terms of a zero tolerance policy for, for persons within the transport sector? Okay, so in the, the time that the 163 warnings were done, the protocol did not provide for uh, an offense in terms of those breaches. Okay. So that is why those warnings were done. But then you would have seen that those numbers did not increase for a while because those issues were not as bad as in the past because the officers were out checking on the vehicles and so on. You will, you will have the, the bus drivers who will still not adhere and they will still carry more than the number of individuals that they're supposed to uh, but the new protocols it does allow for now three persons per seat and so I don't want to say I do not anticipate that people will not um, ad continue to adhere but I think the number of breaches will decrease. Okay understood. Uh, coming back to you Commissioner uh, on the topic of the resumption of cruise tourism. So we can expect, well, from today for the entire season, uh, increased uh, visitor activity in the city center. Uh, can you speak to the plans, if any, by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to increase uh, patrolling to ensure the safety of our visitors coming back to our shores and also to ensure that there is adherence to our national protocols? Yes. Um First of all, um, I must indicate that, especially um, with the opening today, the, the plan was to have um, the passengers disembark um, in certain numbers per, per hour. And um, also, as part of the plan, was that there wouldn't be um, persons wandering or walking about, that they would, if they are disembarking, that they would be going on a Excursion. Uh, on an excursion, on an approved Planet taxi code. would take them to a designated site. So this is one of the um, measures that are in place. Also, what we we have is a, um, we have our teams when uh, it is necessary for them to go off that um, pier and be walking the the streets. That would have a police a police really? presence and um, to ensure that persons would be wearing wearing of their mask because it is still um, required Even to wear the mask. Even though they are fully vaccinated? Yes. Until um, that protocol is relaxed, we must still um, police it. Okay, understood. Uh, we heard from Corporal Joseph on the 
uh, criminal offenses, updates with respect to that, um, huge gains made in the investigation and, and conclusion of them. Uh, what, what plans are, are have, uh, underway for hotspot areas? Because we continue to hear from certain areas continuously uh, generating criminal activity. Is there any plan of the Royal Police, Royal Sanusha Police Force to increase surveillance in these areas, uh, as with the case of uh, Waden Jackmel, where we saw uh, loss of innocent lives? Yes, um, actually we have had plans for that, and um, the plans have been implemented. And um, what you find happening is that we would have um, special operations in those areas, and also frequent police um, presence in the um, in these areas by way of uh, mobile or foot or foot patrol. Um, what we normally, especially, we realized that the Denry, Jack Mel, Viewfort areas were under increase, so we have directed more resources to those areas to ensure that um, we bring those crime level down. Also, we have had some community interaction. Here, the police going out there. We have. Um, seek help from the um, social transformation. We have persons going out there speaking to both victims and in some cases suspects. Understood. Right. And final question for me, any connections being made in terms of the illicit um, weapons and ammunition uh, trade and, and trafficking in country? Because we're seeing quite a few instances as Corporal Joseph indicated. Yes, um, actually, some of the, most of the um, homicides committed were um, by means of firearm. Firearm was the choice um, weapon, and um, we believe that the firearms trade, yeah, it contributes towards the homicide. So what we will be doing also is to be concentrating on taking off those firearms out from the street, and um, actually we have a. A strategy that would be developed soon um, from within. Um, this would be brought out um, to the fore as soon as um, we've we've completed that strategy. Yes. Okay, understood. At this time, I want to provide the opportunity for final words, Dr. Sealy. So uh, once again, I would just like to encourage everyone to follow the protocols. That is to wear a mask properly, sanitize social distance. I know when we have activities, persons forget, and so we do not social distance, which is important, and we remove our mask. And for our safety and the safety of ourselves and our families, we need to remember to be safe at all times. Also like to rem remind the public that we need to avoid overcrowding bars and any mass activity, mass crowd activity, sorry, that should not be taking place especially if there's no protocol or measure in place to ensure that whatever we're doing is done safely. We are battling a disease, and so we need to do so together. And that is it for me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Corporal Joseph. I don't know if you want to incorporate coming from the public relations desk of the force, uh, the engagement with media, uh, but of course they're ang anxious for uh, information coming from you in terms of criminal uh, updates, criminal offense updates? Well, I think before we go to the media, I think it's prudent that I thank the members of the public who have been instrumental in the Royal Sanusha Police Force recording the latest successes. Um, I think without them as our partners, providing the support, the information, the force as an organization would not be able to reap the rewards that we're um, reaping now. Um, as it relates to the media, yes, um, we do believe, and this is why we're taking this opportunity to bring this information to the fore, we do believe that they're also instrumental in our fight against crime. Um, one of the major challenges in our fight is actually getting rid of the fear of crime. And one such way that we can do that is to put our successes out there to restore public confidence and to let persons know that we continue to perform. Um, towards achieving our mandate, which is crime reduction. Thank you very much for that. Commissioner? Yes, just to inform the general public that um, we, the police, is there to protect, protect and serve, and um, that this we would do. Um, we would do it without any fear or favor or um, prejudice. We would 
give everybody the same opportunities, um, especially in that season. Um, let me assure persons that they would be, especially um, in approving political activities, that it would be policed in a fair, in a fair manner, that everybody would be able to put out their message and their supporters um, enjoying or um, supporting whichever party of their choice. Um, the difference would be on the day of election. So we will be out there and the police, and that is why um, we would not like persons to hold any activity that is not sanctioned by the police. So once it is sanctioned, we would have sufficient police officers to man those activities to prevent any disturbance or any security breach. Thank you very much for yes. that. Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy, uh, Corporal Ann Joseph from the Public Relations Desk of the Force, and the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Dr. Mashama Seeley, in that order speaking today. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. This has been an update from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force on the COVID-19 uh, protocol breaches, also criminal offenses, and as well as an announcement on and the agreement uh, that has been uh, come upon by the three registered political parties, independent candidates, and the government of St. Lucia. Uh, thank you very much for the work that the force does uh, in terms of the, the times that we're living in, COVID-wise as well as campaign-wise. We're in the election season, and we do hope that we continue to have uh, free, fair, engagement with the public, as well as the public being able to be responsible enough uh, to adhere to the protocols uh, and the law in general. My name is Jesse Leons, signing off for now. Do stay tuned to NTN for more programming. Goodbye.